Stop waiting for your future to happen. Master the AI workflows that turn static dreams into living, breathing proof. See your success in 2026 before it even exists. Design the career, the lifestyle, the feeling. Don't just visualize it, create it. Welcome to the course. Welcome back to module three of this creative AI course where we are teaching you to dream big with AI. To create from absolute scratch an ideal moment that you'd like to see happen for yourself in 2026. And in doing so, learn the very basics of AI cinematography using tools available at the Open Art site. My name is Bob Doyle. I'm your guide for this little journey. And up to this point, we have taught you how to put yourself in custom images that you create based on a prompt. We've taught you how to add other custom elements into that image to make it even more customizable. And we've taught you how to add a layer of emotion and expression and transfer information into your images because this story arc that we're telling with your ideal moment in 2026 should be something of a before and an after. And in fact, your homework for the last module was to create a series of before and after pictures. So the example I used was this picture here where I'm sitting on this purple sports car without a crazy looking ukulele. And then the after is, I have it. Or in the case of an emotional transformation, we start with a happy picture. We learned how to make it pensive, anxious, and sad. This module is about bringing all of this to life. Because after all, we're here to create a video of the most exciting moment you can imagine for yourself of 2026 and a bunch of static images probably isn't going to do it. And that's not why you're here anyway. You want to make these things move. And I don't blame you because it's fun. So how do we use AI to make images move? Just in case you're absolutely brand new to all of this, you should know that it wasn't that long ago that in terms of generating AI video, it was only text to video. Just like we would type a text prompt to create an image, we would type a text prompt to create a video basically from scratch. And we had to use very descriptive language and really identify everything we wanted to happen in that. Then finally, along came image to video. Now we can start with an image and give it a text prompt to give it action, but the text prompt no longer has to be so complicated because we don't have to describe what's in the image anymore. That method of creating video is what we will discuss in module four as we wrap things up. Because since then, an even simpler method for getting precisely the type of animation you want has hit the scene and it's called start and end frames. So you might have a cat sitting a couple of feet away from a cup of coffee as your start frame. And then with everything else in the kitchen the same, that same cat drinking out of that mug as the end frame. Using the process I'm going to teach you in a very simple prompt, we get a result like this. Where the first frame of that animation is the start frame, and the last frame of this animation is, of course, the end frame, and the AI filled in all the details. This is a very simple example, but we've got more complex ones on the way. So let's see how this works by looking at another example from some of the images we created earlier. In this case, we're going to bring our emotional transformation to life by doing start and end frames with some of the pictures with different emotions that we used before. So let me show you how easy it is to use that technique here in open art and also play with a variety of models to get a variety of results, even with the same same two images. Because start and end frame is, of course, a video tool, I'm just going to click under video and click on image to video. Now this brings us to our video creation workspace, and you'll see that we have the ability to do text to video, image to video, and then something called elements to video and video to video. Elements to video and video to video we will save for another time because they're just a little bit more advanced, but they do allow some amazing customization. But for the purposes of our exercise, we're going to stick to these two so you don't get too overwhelmed. As I mentioned, we're going to do text video in module four. So let's click over here to image. And now we will have the ability to choose any of the models that say end frame right here. That's how we know that this is a model that supports the start and end frame capability. So we could, for example, just start right up here at the top and say cling 2.6, which is a newer model. And then we would choose the start and end frames we want to use. Just like the reference images in the image creation section, we can do that just by clicking here and either uploading images. Or in our case, we're just going to go to our history and choose the images that we want to use as start and end frame. So for example, if we want to start with this happy face, we confirm that. Now we click on end frame. We do the same thing, click on history. And for the end frame, we'll choose this one here. And now even with no prompting whatsoever, it's probably going to be obvious enough to the AI what we're trying to do here. Many of these models have options for duration and even the ability to add audio natively. We're going to look at models that do all of these things. But for now, this particular model doesn't support audio for start and end frames. We're just going to create a short five second video and see what happens. Now, although I say you don't have to put a prompt, if you don't and give the AI enough time to play with, it might make some creative decisions on its own. Like this, for example, where it 
actually dollied around the subject and then that's how it made the transition from one image to the other. I didn't prompt that and I didn't necessarily want that. So if I want to avoid that, that's when I would use a prompt and be more specific. Here I added the prompt, camera holds steady on man as he changes his facial expression. Now we start with a pensive look and without any extreme camera movements, we get that very natural transition. Now this is an area where I really invite you, I insist in fact, that you play with some of these models that support in frames because you can get some very different results. Let me show you some examples with the same start and end frame, different model, but same instructions, and you'll see the wide variety of results we get. So my start and end frame here expresses a very definite emotional arc. First of all, I'm looking nervous and anxious. The stage is empty. And in the end frame, I'm confident and I'm playing and there's a band behind me. So what we want the AI to do is to make a logical transition from the first frame to the last frame. And we do that with this prompt here. The worried man is joined by his bandmates who walk onto the stage and they begin to play. The model I'm using here is Seed Dance 1.5 Pro and it supports audio natively. If I click on reuse settings, you can see exactly how I set it up. We have the start frame here, the end frame here. I typed in the prompt. I did a duration of nine seconds, just sort of random that varies between the models, so keep that in mind. I chose 720p as the resolution. Many models go to 1080p and some even go higher than that. Different models support different aspect ratios. I really love the Seed Dance 1.5 Pro model. It's super powerful, it's very intuitive, and you got lots of options, and it has audio natively built in, which in this case I opted for. So here's how this model transitioned those two images. I'm not sure what to do. So you can see there at the end, there was a weird little shuffle there to the front of the stage, which is just about to happen here. That's clearly not what we want. So if I insisted on staying with C-Dance model, I would probably reprompt it or maybe just even run it again and see if we got a different result. Just to show you what I mean, if that's what I did here, same C-Dance 1.5 Pro model, same start and stop images, same prompt. We get this this time. time we got one continuous motion as the band members came up on stage. There wasn't any cut, there wasn't any dissolve. We got that kind of rack zoom thing a la Jaws. And overall a much better result, but everything was exactly the same. That is just AI. It isn't AI being bad, it isn't AI being broken, it isn't AI being not good enough. It's just where we are right now, and it's all still a miracle. So the next model we're playing with is VO3, which really shook the whole AI planet, not that long ago in AI terms, with the ability to create native audio and cinematic looking video with just a prompt and eventually from an image and eventually start and stop frames, which is what we're doing here. So the prompt is exactly the same. The first frame is the same and the end frame is exactly the same. All I did was change the model and this is what Veo gave us. It's all right, it's okay when the music starts to play. Veo actually wrote the lyrics to that song and put a voice to it without any prompting from me. We got the band members coming up on stage. We did have a dissolve from one sort of cut to another. It's not exactly what I was trying to demonstrate. It still is a first and last frame example in one generated video. What we're really looking for is smooth, fluid movement from one frame to the other without any cuts or weird dissolves. Here's a second pass with Veo 3. So aside from the fact that I somehow walk through this stool right here and it just sort of disappears, everything else is extremely fluid. Again, we just get one shot, there's no dissolves, the band members all come up on stage, it's coherent and there's musicality and everything. And all I did was run it again. We saw examples from the Kling 2.6 model. This is actually the Kling 2.5 model. The main difference here is it doesn't generate audio natively, but it still does a great job of joining those two start and stop frames together in a seamless way. Remember we talked about the start and stop frames where I didn't have the weird ukulele and then I did have the weird ukulele. Here I use those as the start and stop frames obviously and the prompt for the Seed Dance 1.5 Pro model in this particular case is as a man sits on his car Bigfoot walks in carrying an instrument which he hands to the man then walks away. There's some logic to that prompt because Bigfoot is not in either the start or the stop frame but I'm able to prompt him in as long as he leaves before it's all over. Again this Seed Dance model has native audio so let's see what it gave us. Wow that's really cool.
But that's another example of where it gave me a dissolve that I didn't actually want near the end. We did get everything I asked for. Bigfoot walks away. We see him from a different camera angle. It's actually kind of a bonus effect that I didn't plan for. It was just a more creative way that the AI thought to make that transition to this last frame. I didn't actually tell it to make it one smooth transition, so can I really blame the AI? Maybe the AI. <laughs> Here's the Kling 2.6 model, which we saw before. No audio along with this one. So he brings in an actual guitar, which as I turn it, becomes this. And then of course we kind of go from day to night. But given that I asked it to do a good bit in just a few seconds, it's doing the best it can. If I had used maybe 12 seconds for this transition instead of 10, we may not have had that sort of jerky movement near the end right there. If you'll remember the images here were originally created to show an emotional arc where I'm sitting on the car excited about getting this ukulele and then am disappointed when I actually get it. And that's why I have this look on my face. I keep stressing the emotional arc because if you are here to learn about AI cinematography and you want to tell stories, well, emotional arcs are going to be an important part of it. And learning to make them realistic is an art in and of itself, but these tools make it a lot easier with a combination of text prompting and using start and stop frames to dictate exactly what emotional expression you want at exactly what time. Here, the before picture is this woman on a stage presenting an Oscar, and the in frame is me and my purple and blue tux again holding that Oscar up high in the sky. So to help guide it along, the prompt was, woman announces Bob Doyle is the winner of the Oscar for Best Actor in a Web Tutorial. And the man in the blue and purple tuxedo walks in and accepts the award. The prompt says, announces Bob Doyle. This particular model does not support audio, but some of the other ones do. But here's how Kling 2.6 handled this. I don't know how much more perfect it could be. It's exactly what we want. Again, the advantage of start and end frames is exact placement. You may not always need a clip to end exactly in a particular place. And in that case, you can use the image to video along with text prompting to just let the AI take it wherever it wants to go. It just depends on your creative needs. Everything is the same, except this time I use the Seedance 1.5 Pro model, which does support audio. The Oscar for best actor goes to Bob Doyle. Thank you so much. How cool is that? So now it's your turn. For your homework for this module, we want you to take those before and after pictures from your homework for module two and use the start and end frame process on any and all of these models that you want to, to bring them to life and experiment with prompting and experiment with bringing elements in through prompting that weren't there before, like my Bigfoot. Basically, have fun with it. Ideally, these images are related to this dream you have for yourself for 2026. The goal being to get you really emotionally invested in this so that the video you create on the other end is something that actually makes you feel something. That is the point. And if you're here to learn to tell cinematic stories, you're going to want to learn to tell a story that makes people feel things. So why not start now with yourself? So just to be super clear on the assignment, you're going to come in here to open art. You're going to go to the video creation module. You're going to choose any of these models that say end frame on them. And you're going to either go back into your history or upload from your computer any start and end frames you want. And don't worry if they're radically different. Give the AI the ability to do something radically different. Let me show you an example. Let's take two radically radically different images from our history. Like this guy with a parrot on his shoulder drinking coffee in the snow, and we'll do an end frame. Let's get him over here on this car somehow. Now we will definitely want to use some prompting here to make this happen because it would probably just do all sorts of strange morphing if we don't. So to handle this transition as smoothly as possible, I give the prompt as much detail about how I want things to change so that in my mind it could be a seamless transition. So for example, the man of the cabin puts down his coffee, the parrot flies away. That takes care of those two elements. And then the man stands up and the camera tracks him as he walks and takes off his coat to reveal he's wearing a blue t-shirt. This takes care of the transition of clothing and he walks seamlessly with no cuts to his purple car parked on a city street and sits on the hood. So hopefully that's enough information for it to handle this transition. But we also want to make sure that we give it plenty of time. That's one of the reasons I'm choosing the Sea Dance model here is because I can take it all the way up to 12 seconds. I'm going to leave it at 720p resolution. I will leave the audio on and let it do its thing. Keep it at the cinematic aspect ratio because that's what the images are. And then just click create. Let's check it out. So he put down the coffee, the parrot flies away. He stands up, he starts walking, he takes off his jacket. 
you got a blue t-shirt, he's a-walking, now he's on the city street, he walks over to the car, and he sits down on it, ladies and gentlemen. AI is amazing. Think of the creative possibilities in scene transitions alone when you're working on a project, when you can do impossible things like that. To be on the safe side, I did run two generations of that with the same model, everything was the same, and this is what I got there, just to show you the variety of results we can get. So again, he puts down the coffee, the parrot flies away, but this time he goes over this away. Walks through the woods a little bit, and now he's on the city street that way, and we get the same result. He ends up at the end frame sitting on the car. So all that to say, don't worry about rules of physics. Have fun and play and see what you get. Recapping the homework, use any of your start and end frames that you created in module two, or create new ones if you are so inspired, and bring them to life using any of the start and end frame models that we have here on the platform. In the next module, I'm gonna show you how to chain these start and end frame animations together to get much longer clips with continuity as well as showing you how to use image to video using text prompting without an end frame. And then finally, we're going to use the simple editor here in OpenArt to put these clips together and add some music to it and create the final product. Super, super simple. I'm excited to see what you come up with, and I'll see you in the next module.